Amen. Praise God. Great singing, great truth, and uh, that encourages me. If he's going with me, I can go forth. Amen. And uh, if he's not, we better stay at home, huh? Yeah. Please take your Bible and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. This is another favorite portion of Scripture of mine. Hebrews chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, God at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Notice again, please, in verses 1 and 2, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon thee tonight, thanking you for the word of God that we have just read, for the songs that have been sung, for the fellowship that we've enjoyed, simply for being able to be in church this evening and giving us the wherewithal to be able to be here. We know, dear God, that you have provided the strength, and dear God, that you have provided the desire, and dear Lord, you provide all things by your Son, Jesus, mostly that you provided salvation. We are eternally indebted to you because of that. Help us, dear God, to see the importance of the Word of God that we read this evening, and that sweet Holy Spirit of God, you'd make it real in our heart and life and applicable. We commit this service over to you, asking that you would meet with us and wherever the Word of God is being preached and proclaimed, that you would show yourself real. And dear Lord, that uh, we want to let you know the obvious, that we love you, we are totally dependent upon you, and we ask that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2, this verse tells us that uh, the obvious that we know from the Word of God, that God spoke to the, the prophets, through the prophets to the fathers of old time, but that uh, God is still speaking today. And God speaks to us today through His Son. We know that the Son, the Lord Jesus, has the final say on all matters and that uh, God is still speaking to his people, and God wants to speak to his people. And uh, the Bible tells us how God speaks, and if people would simply listen and have a desire to hear from God, uh, that uh, God will communicate to them. And so you know this on, on how God speaks. You can look at Psalm 19.1 and know that he has and does speak through creation. In Psalm chapter 19, the Bible tells us that God speaks uh, even to the heathen world, those that you would say have, have not heard the plain, pointed, practical gospel message, uh, those that are, are not the reached people of the world, God still speaks to them, and he speaks to them through his creation. Psalm 19, the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. 
in them hath he set a tabernacle for the son, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. And this communication through creation doesn't know a language barrier. Throughout all the earth, uh, the, the word of God is proclaimed in that sense through creation so that man that is given the light that he is given can respond to God by just simply looking up at creation and saying there must be a God and the Bible is clear on that that if an individual will respond to the light that is given them God will get them more light and then God speaks not only through creation but as we read in our text through a proclamation uh, the prophets of God those who were the, the workers of God uh, you notice this in Jeremiah and in chapter 7 Jeremiah chapter 7 In Jeremiah chapter 7 and in verse 25, the Bible says, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck, they did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, uh, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. This is God giving instructions to the prophet Jeremiah, telling him that since they came out of Egypt, that God has sent unto them the workers, the servants, the prophets of God, and speaking and preaching to them, Basically, in dropping their idols, uh, dropping or stopping their sin, their iniquities, and turning back to God. But through it all, the Bible says that God says they won't hearken. And yet, God still keeps the word of God going out through the prophet. And he tells Jeremiah this, that uh, I have done this, and now this is the word that I want you to still speak to them. But these are the results that you're going to get. And the results are going to keep getting less, child of God, as you see the day approaching. What's the day? The day of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Evil men and seducers do what? They wax what? Worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. But it doesn't mean that the preaching needs to stop. That the proclaiming of the word of God needs to stop. It needs to keep going on through proclamation. God speaks through creation and proclamation, and then through revelation, the very word of God, that uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You got a copy of it, uh, black ink on white paper. You have the completed revelation of God. There is no more. You don't add to it. You don't take away from it. You have the complete canon of scripture. Uh, you notice this familiar passage of scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 29. And in verse 29, the Bible says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. And uh, there, God is higher than we are. God is bigger than we are. God is all in all. And we can't fathom him. His ways are much higher. His thoughts are much higher. He says, but those things which are revealed, that's revelation. Those things which are revealed, the word of God, they, they belong to us. We own them. You can search them out. You, you have the copy of the word of God and to our children forever. Now watch this. Why, do, why has God revealed that? There are some things about God that he's kept to himself. And you'll be learning about God throughout all of eternity. The vastness of him. And his love. 
And praise God for that. But what he has revealed to you and I, they belong to us and to our children forever. Why? That we may do all the words of this law. He's revealed those to you so that you would do that. And he gives you more illumination on his revelation as you're ready to do what he's called you to do. Now God speaks. He speaks through creation to those that have not heard the gospel so that they're without excuse. And through proclamation, since they've come out, he sent his prophets rising up be times uh, all day long preaching to them. And then through revelation, through the word of God for you and I to hear and to do. Now, number one, I, I, how, how does God speak to his people? I, I need to hear from God. And you need to hear from God. In, in the morning when I wake up, I, I need to hear from God. We are weak. We are frail. Uh, people and we need constant assurance and we know uh, he says I will uh, uh, you abide in me and I'll abide with you and I need to hear from God not only today but I need to hear from God in the morning when I wake up I need to hear from him you need to hear from him and uh, the Bible is plain that God speaks to his people and uh, he speaks to his people look at Psalm chapter 32 Psalm chapter 32. In Psalm chapter 32, in verse 8, the Bible says that God is speaking through the psalmist David, and he says, I will instruct thee, and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Why is that? Because we know God's going to instruct us. If God is going to instruct me, then he's going to instruct me in righteousness or right living or the right way. He's going to teach me in the way which I should go. In the morning, I need to get up and ask him, Lord, which way should I go? I may already have a, a plan laid out. I may have my thoughts laid out, but I better seek the Lord's uh, instruction on which way to go to make sure that it is the way that he wants me to go without turning there you you remember the story of, of David and, and fighting in the battles that he had to fight and he asked the Lord if he should go up and, and fight and he did and David got a victory and praise God for that but then the battle uh, was going to happen again and, and David could have said God already gave me the victory in this battle and I'm going to go the same way that God uh, led me in the victory on the last battle. But he inquired and God said, no. I want you to go around by the mulberry tree. The mulberry. Yes. And when you, when you hear the, the rustling in the mulberry tree, then you go out and that's the victory. Now that, that is speaking in a voice from God in direction where you get up tomorrow and it may be the same thing that you ought to do, you know to do, and I'm going to go do that same thing, but I first inquire of God, which way would you have me to go today, Lord? I'm, I'm checking in, I'm, I'm asking, which way would you have me to go today? And it may be the same way, amen, praise God for that. But I'm going to ask, why? Because the Bible says that he will instruct me and teach me in the way which I should go and guide me with his eye. And then verse 11, I'll be glad in the Lord. Amen, that I went the way that he wanted me to go and not my way. God speaks to us through his word by his spirit. He makes that very clear in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, God speaks to us through his word and uh, by his spirit. In John chapter 14 and in verse 26. The Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things 
and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. What has God said unto us? The word of God that you read on a daily basis. Don't, don't go on a, a day without reading the word of God. You say, I've made a trip through it. Take another trip through it. And another, and another, and another. And the older we get, we need to take more trips because uh, my memory's failing. And I need to have more of that. I need to have more of the word of God. It needs to be the, the natural response that I know. And then the Holy Spirit of God will bring that to my remembrance. There'll be a verse. There'll be something that was said. And the Holy Spirit of God will bring that to your remembrance. God speaks to you through his preachers. Praise God for those that preach the word of God. Look at Titus chapter 1. They may be underrated or underappreciated, but not with God. And praise God for them. Titus chapter 1. Timothy Titus chapter 1. In Titus chapter 1, I want you to notice verse 3. But hath in due times manifested his word. Manifest means to, to bring about. It means to make visible, to make real to you. It was manifested. Manifested. In these times, God manifests his word that he's spoken to us. How does he do it? He tells you right here. Through what? Through preaching. He manifests the word of God through preaching. I know that you read the Bible. Praise God for that. But you need preaching. I know that you like uh, songs that edify the body and uh, lift up the name of the Lord Jesus and praise God for that. It should be, the Bible says, but you need preaching. Praise God for the singing and the singers. Praise God for all of that. But you need preaching. Why? Because God manifests the word of God to you and I through preaching. I need preaching. More and more and more. We need preaching. He uses his preachers. God speaks to us through providential means. Uh, God controlled means. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Why is that? Well, because of a, a providential means. Because... For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. What is that? That is a providential act of God. I'm going to stick here at Ephesus until Pentecost. Why, preacher? Why? Because there is a great door of opportunity. There is an open door of opportunity that the Lord has impressed upon the heart of this individual, of this preacher, effectual, and there are many adversaries. What are the adversaries, the things that are trying to block the way, the things that are trying to block the gospel, the things that are trying to discourage you? Many adversaries. Look at Acts chapter uh, 16. Acts chapter 16. Providential means. Acts chapter 16. Verse 7. The Bible says, after they were come to Mysia, they say, that means desired, it was on their heart to go, they wanted to go to, to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. You wanted to go in this direction, it was laid on your heart to do a work for God, and you thought this was the way that you ought to go, but the Holy Spirit of God suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas, and a vision appeared uh, to Paul in the night, there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When an individual is sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God and realizes, Hey, this is closed over here, then he opens and shows where it is open. That, that's a providential means. 
if we're sensitive. So uh, God speaks, and he expects his people to listen and obey. God speaks to his people. Look at this, number two. God speaks with his people. Uh, not just to his people, but with his people. When we say speak to the people, we call that sit and get. In other words, like in, in education and so forth, uh, we call that sit and get. That the student sits there and they get whatever that the teacher is giving them. They, they get that. But this becomes a little bit more personal. God speaks with his people. In 1 John chapter 1, And in verse 3, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is fellowship. God speaks with his people as we exercise fellowship with him. That means that you want to be with him, that you want to be around him, that you say you love Jesus, and it's evident because you want to be with him. You want to be with his people. Uh, you, you like being in church, and, and you want to be around his people, and you want to be around Jesus. Why? Because you have fellowship with Jesus. The closer that you have fellowship with Jesus, the more that you get to enjoy him and to hear from him. And learn from him. And uh, he, he speaks to you as a friend. John 15 and verse 15 makes that clear. For the child of God that wants to be a friend of Jesus and have fellowship with Jesus, then uh, God speaks to you not only as creator and, and God, though he is almighty, but he speaks to you and I as a friend. And a friend gets in on more things than just an individual like a servant. John chapter 15 and verse 15, the Bible says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Everything that God the Father has shared with God the Son, God the Son shared with his apostles, minus Judas that betrayed him. And the one that got the, the very most is the human penman of this book, John the Beloved. And in it often he calls himself what? The apostle whom what? Jesus what? Loved. He loved Jesus and Jesus loved him. He's the one that was laying on the bosom of Jesus. And Peter had to nudge and say, ask him which one is going to be to portray him. Well, Peter, you know just as well. You've been with us all the time. But it seemed like John had a little closer friendship with Jesus. And the more of a friendship he had with Jesus, the more that he learned and knew. Loved on Jesus, Jesus loved on him. He speaks to us as, as a friend. God speaks to you and I as a companion in Hebrews 13, 5. And the Bible says, I'll, I'll never leave thee. I'll, I'll never forsake thee. I, I, I heard of a, of a preacher that got set aside because his wife left him. And, and that's a sad thing. If he's a God-called preacher and a, and a wife decides she don't want to be part of that and, and leaves. God... The Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit never leave you as, as a companion. And you can get alone with him and tell him everything and share with him what you cannot share with an individual as a companion. And it is a, a very fearful thing when uh, something happens on my end to break that line of communication. It's a very fearful thing, it's a very lonely thing for something on my end, not his end, my end, to break that line of communication. Uh, you, you know that can happen. Look at 1 Samuel 28 for just a moment and then we'll go on. 1 Samuel 28. In 
1 Samuel chapter 28. The Bible says in verse 6, 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. When Saul inquired of the Lord, I believe that at that moment in time he was serious about inquiring of the Lord because the enemy was there very present. And he inquired of the Lord of what to do. The Lord didn't answer him. The line of communication was broken. And you know why. You know the story of Saul. That he had partial obedience, which is disobedience. And to obey is better than sacrifice. But when you and I would look at that, we would say, well, the man did go out and fight. And all they did was bring back some animals and so forth. And the Lord cut him off from being king cut off the line of communication. That's a fearful thing. When is the line of communication getting cut off? It's when you open up the Word of God and you read the Word of God, but you're not getting anything. You come to the house of God and the preaching of the Word of God, you're not getting anything. That's losing a line of communication. Your mind is more set on something outside than what's going on inside. You want to sit down for a 10 minute devotion and get something from God and you don't get anything from God because you're really wanting to close the book and get out the house and get going without waiting for the instruction. Or you come to church and you're more interested in getting out of church than getting what God would have you from church. You're getting into dangerous territory of, of not getting what God would have for you. you you're you're Dangering the lines of communication. And, and Saul here has now broken the line of communication. And, and if that happens, what happens is it, it could get worse if there's not a repentance and a resetting. Saul went from this as bad to worse with the witch of Endor. And it's a fearful thing. And so God does speak to his people, and God wants to speak with his people. And then, here, here's last. I said uh, how God speaks, it's obviously through creation and proclamation of, through the prophets and revelation through the word of God. And he speaks to his people. It, it's kind of more um, in the sense of maybe a church setting, a teaching setting, a preaching uh, setting where the word of God is opened up and the preaching goes on and he uh, speaks to his people. But then on an individual basis, maybe in the morning when you get up or sometime and you have your daily devotion, I hope you do, where you read the word of God before you get going, God wants to speak with his people. And it's it's one-on-one -on -one time. It's searching the scriptures, whether those things be so. It's one-on-one, -on -one, you and God, speaking with his people. As a friend, getting instructions and so forth. And then last, God speaks through his people. God uses his people to speak his word. And he's still doing that today in Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 20. In Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 20. Christ is sending out uh, the apostles to preach. And I understand that he sent them first to the house of Israel. And then. Uh, there were the 70 and they, they, they went out and, and preaching everywhere and so forth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And in verse 20, the Bible says, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. As sent forth to speak, God speaks through his people. Well, what am I going to say, preacher? You don't have to make anything up. 
It's not a fabrication of uh, fables. It's you just simply speaking the word of God. Of what God spoke to you through his word by his spirit. On the general sense. On the reading through. And then on that one-on-one -on -one time. When God spoke to your heart. Through your devotions. And then God uses his people to speak that word. It's not your words. It's God's word. Preachers and teachers uh, consulting God before counseling others in the word of God. It, whenever a preacher or a teacher consults the word of God and says, Lord, what would you have me to preach? Lord, what would you have me to teach? Let me ask you this in generalities. Is there anything in the word of God that you could open up and go to the wrong direction and preach and teach from that would be wrong? It wouldn't be wrong. There's no address that is wrong to take the gospel. And there's no text that's wrong in the word of God that won't benefit the people of God. But as the individual is sincere in saying, God, what does this group of people need? Or what does this church, if you're going to go preach and teach, need? What do they need to hear down over here and so forth? With, with all that could be brought out, Lord, lay it on my heart what you want me to teach. And everybody here that's priest knows that it is uh, a bad thing when God is silent. When you've asked, Lord, what do you want me to preach and teach? And you, you, got, you have to get something. Now, you can't go to the wrong text, but it sure has more liberty when God lays a thought, a word, a text, something on your heart. And then you can get up and preach. Uh, every Christian and every lay person ought to seek the mind of God on matters. And then when they get that, that they believe this is what God would have me preach and teach. This is what God would have me to do. Have a Bible basis for it and, and believe that it's the Word of God. People are helped when the Word of God is preached. H how do you know? Because the Bible says so. People are helped when the Word of God is preached. Uh, I love the singing of the songs of Zion. And praise God for that. They touch my heart. We are feeling-based people. And God is a God of music. The devil is the one that ruined the music. Praise God for those who still have standards in music. But it is the preaching of the word of God that helps people. Amen. When you are preaching the truth of the word of God, you are preaching Jesus. How do you know that? Well, because the word of God is the word of Jesus. In, in fact, uh, Jesus is the Word of God manifested. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when you stand and preach from a text of the Word of God, you are preaching and teaching Jesus. And you believe that from the Word of God. He is the, the Word of God. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3. The reason that the devil fights you from picking up the Bible is because you're getting the word of God. The reason the devil fights you from coming to church is because you're getting the preaching of the word of God. And you need preaching. Preaching helps you. Preaching is preaching about the Lord Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3, and in verse 16, the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. But now wait a minute. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and what? Admonishing. Teaching and preaching the word of God admonishes an individual. And then the singing 
is wonderful, praise God, but it's first the teaching, the preaching of the Word of God, and it admonishes you. That means it helps you. Preaching of the Word of God helps you. Look at Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, not only is the preaching of the Word of God admonishing uh, to you, to help you, in Acts chapter 20 and in verse 32, the Bible says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up, to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified, or all of them that are set apart, or all them that are saved. They get an inheritance. I commend you over to the preaching of the Word of God. I commend you to the Word of His grace, the Word of God. What does it do, preacher? It builds you up. Everything is meant to tear you down. Everything on TV tears you down. Everything in the world is confusing. Everything on the internet tears you down. Everything that you get out there in the marketplace and you see, it tears you down. But the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God is able to build you up. And it has an inheritance among all those that are saved. Preaching of the Word of God. It's power. It is able to build you up where someone else can't build you up. Something other than the Word of God can't build you up. Man, when you're feeling lower than a snake's belly, you better be in the Word of God. It will build you up. When maybe family and friends won't build you up, the Word of God will build you up. And if you're counting on somebody else to build you up, you're going to be in for a sad awakening and a sad surprise. It's the Word of God that will build you up. Now watch this, and I'm almost done. 2 Timothy 4, 2. 2 Timothy 4, 2. In 2 Timothy 4, 2. The Bible here is the Apostle Paul that is parting off the scene. He would be the senior pastor. He, he was evangelist and a church planter. I realize that. But he's given instructions to young Timothy that says, Now, Timothy, uh, when, when I leave, this is what people need. Now, uh, they may not know they need it, but this is what they need. They may not even want it, but this is what they need. They're going to like music programs, but this is what they need. They're going to like all of the busyness and the social atmosphere and the programs. They're going to like that, but this is what they need. This is what they need. And he says, well, what is it? What, what do they need? Preach the word. You better be in a church that's preaching the word. Praise God if it's big. Uh, praise God if it's got uh, everything right. Amen for that. But it better be preaching the word. And for the child of God that can get alone with God and realize God spoke to me through creation. I knew there was a God. And I knew the prophets of God of old spoke, but I need to be spoken to today. And he says, I have through my son. He has final say, and he has the word of God, and God speaks to his people. And then get alone, and God speaks with his people. And then God speaks through his people. And I want you to be instant in that. I, I want you to be like that ready scribe of the Old Testament. Ready at the drop of the hat, and you drop the hat. You look for an opportunity to... Speak the word. Preach the word. How did church go yesterday? What did you learn at church yesterday? Uh, could I give you an invite to church? Could I give you an invite to Christ? Could I tell you how the word of God spoke to my heart? Do you know what? It's going to be all right. God is still in control. The word of God is not antiquated. It's up to date. God said it would be like this. God is coming back. The Lord Jesus is coming back. Be instant, in season, out of season. Now watch, reprove. I know that's wrong. I know that's not right. That's sin. Rebuke. 
If you don't stop sinning, this is what takes place. But then they need some exhortation. The child of God needs some exhortation. And the preacher of God's going to have to be long suffering with that, just like Jesus was long suffering with you. And yes, in right doctrine. They need some exhortation. Child of God, you can go on one more day. Child of God, you can go on one more week if he tarries. Why? Because you win. You have an inheritance. You have the word of God. And God still speaks to his people. If you'll listen, and I, I have to hear from him. And you have to hear from him. 1 Samuel 3.10, the Bible says of little young Samuel, little boy, little boy, Israel's in a mess. Light of God's going out in the temple. The old prophet had two boys that weren't worth much, didn't know God. There's a little boy in there. And God can use anyone he wants. He said, Samuel, Samuel. And he ran in several times. Eli knew what was going on. He said, you go back in there and lay down. If he comes again, you say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And he went in, laid back down again, and the Lord stood by him. He said, Samuel, Samuel. And the boy said, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And then you read of the greatest prophet, Samuel. God's still speaking today. God wants to speak to you. And God wants to speak with you. And God wants to speak through you. And he's still doing it today. God, in sundry times, in diverse manner, spake to the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, who he made the world. By the grace of God, you have the Word of God on it, and you have the Spirit of God in you, and He wants to speak to you, and He will lead, guide, and direct if you and I will simply listen to Him and praise God for it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, that we have the Word of God and that you're still speaking today. Help us, dear Lord, to have a desire to hear what you say and then heed what you say to us. Help us, dear Lord, as a church, as a body, as Christians, dear God, here and around the world to be encouraged that God is still on the throne. Jesus is coming back soon and we have the word of God on it. We commit this time over to you, dear Lord, and pray that if anybody needs to do any business with you at all, dear God, you give them the encouragement and wherewithal to do it. We ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.